Hi everyone, I'm Maxim Lubastar and I'm here to talk to you about lateral torsional buckling of beams with warping restraints and supports. So, first of all, I will introduce the subject and then I will detail the analytical model that we developed. Firstly, in the simple case of a uniform bending moment distribution, and then it will be generalized to a linear bending moment distribution. In both cases, I will explain the displacement and rotation field that we used and the expression of the critical bending moments that we obtained. I will then show a comparison of KW and C1 against the predictions of existing proposals. And finally, analytical predictions will be compared to finite element analysis results uh, about the value of the critical bending moment. I will then conclude. So elastic lateral torsional buckling is generally investigated considering fork supports at both ends, which means uh, free warping. So we are here to investigate about the influence of warping restraints on the elastic critical bending moment of a doubly symmetric A or H beam. Um, so in the common case, the critical bending moment can be evaluated using this expression if the bending moment distribution is linear. Uh, so there are two parameters, C1 and KW, which are the equivalent uniform moment factor and the warping coefficient that both depend on the stiffness of the warping restraint that we will see later. So Linda and Gesels proposed an expression for the warping coefficient here, depending on the stiffness of the warping restraints, of course. For instance, for white plates, we have this expression of the stiffness of the warping restraints. This expression is, is also found in ECCS. Um, besides, Pi and Traher proposed another expression for, for KW. Kutrowski and Zekowski developed uh, an analytical model and proposed an expression for the critical bending moment, which have a formalism different from uh, that the formula I uh, showed before. But by identification, we can see the warping coefficient here, and the, we can determine the value of the equivalent uniform moment factor, uh, which is shown in the table here. Uh, we can see an increase between the case of free warping, which is the second line, and fixed warping, which is the bottom line. Uh, we can see that the increase is between 10 to 20%. So we developed an analytical model for which we chose the expression of the torsional rotation for restraint warping that is given here. So this expression complies with the boundary conditions that are given here and um, is also in good agreement with the, the two specific cases of free warping and fixed warping for which we have the exact expression here and the approximation here. Um, so when we compare this expression uh, to finite element analysis, we can see a good agreement between the, the, the results, even though there is a little difference on supports when looking at the first derivative, but it's still admissible. And since out of plane rotation is free at both ends, we assume that the literal lateral displacement can be um, approximated by half of a sine wave. So using those displacement and rotation field, we integrate over the length and so on, and we obtain this expression for the potential energy uh, with the strain energy of the beam and the spring and the, the work of the external load. So then we obtain this expression for the critical bending moment in which we recognize the equivalent uniform moment factor here and a developing coefficient within those, uh, those parameters. So we have those two expressions in the case of uniform bending moment distribution. In the case of a linear bending moment distribution, we add the second term to the torsional rotation and the lateral displacement. Uh, so for the torsional rotation, we had we had the second term, which has more half sine waves, but that complies with the boundary conditions and tends to to the expression for free warping and fixed warping in both cases. And regarding the lateral displacement, we use a second term that corresponds to a whole, a whole sine wave. 
So using these expressions, we again determine the potential energy that we minimize. And so we obtain a four by four matrix uh, for which we assume that the determinant is null, is equal to, to zero to obtain the, the minimum value of the bending moment, which is then the critical bending moment. So that's why we obtain a four degree equation here um, of, of MCR and replacing MCR by, by the expression that, get, that I gave early. Uh, we obtain this expression for KW, which is exactly the same as the beam under, under uniform bending moment, but we obtain a four degree equation of C1 which we solve, assuming that KT, which is the ratio between the warping and the torsional uh, constant, is equal to zero. This gives us a general expression for C1 that is not valid for Psi equals to minus one or one, which is, how we, which is why we had three expressions in this table. And as we can see, the equivalent uniform moment factor depends on the bending moment distribution and on the warping stiffness through the parameters uh, Xi1, 2, and 3. So then we can compare the value of KW that we obtained with those with the values given by Prudovsky and Zikowski, Payentre and ECCS. So we can see a good agreement within the, the four proposals. And a small difference when warping tend to be fixed, uh, which is the detail here, because ECCS and the analytical model tend to 0 0.5, whereas Piotrowski and Pi and Trial tend to values a little bit lower than that. Now we can compare the value of C1 um, obtained with the analytical model to finite element analysis and to the values provided by the French National Annex. So in the case of free warping, we can see that the analytical model always, always lays above the values of French National Annex. And compared to finite element analysis, the difference on the unsafe side is at most two to three percent. So it's, it's uh, really admissible. And uh, regarding fixed warping, we can see that the analytical model predicts pretty well the results of finite element analysis, except when Psi is lower than 0 0.5, for which the analytical model become really, really safe. But uh, there is still a significant difference between the, the value of C1 for free and fixed warping in the analytical model. So using the global analytical model, uh, we can determine the value of the critical bending moment that is calculated, divided by uh, its value for free warping in the cases of uniform moment, fact, uniform moment distribution and triangular uh, moment distribution and for psi equals to minus one. Uh, we can see also the results of finite element analysis and the predictions that we obtain using Kurovsky and Zikovsky's model. So for Psi equals to 1 and 0, we can say that the analytical model is in good agreement with finite element analysis. And when warping is fully restrained, um, the analytical model slightly lays on the safe side. For Psi equals to minus 1, the difference is a little bit bigger with the finite element analysis, but always on the safe side, uh, while well, the difference is about uh, 10 to 15 percent. And uh, in more general view, we can see that the critical bending moment can be more than twice its value when warping is assumed as fixed compared to when compared to when its value is assumed as free at both ends. So it's really significant. So to end this presentation, I will conclude and say that warping restraints have an influence 
when determining the critical bending moment on the equivalent uniform moment factor and on the warping coefficient kW. Uh, we have seen uh, just before that warping strain can increase the critical bending moment by a factor greater than two, that, so it's really significant and it should be considered. And the predictions of the analytical model are in good agreement with those of finite element analysis. Our future developments are concerning um, other distribution of the bending moment and the definition of a criterion to consider warping as fixed as are both ends. Sorry. And um, we may study the warping stiffness of some connection configurations. So that's it for the presentation. I'm really thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or remarks, don't hesitate.